When BitTitan puts out a product, it calls on two individuals to demonstrate those products to the world. Daryl Jekyll Webster, super genius, and Jethro Brainiac Seegers, evil mastermind. <laughs> when they aren't pushing the envelope of string theory or searching for the Higgs boson, they demonstrate the high power BitTitan product line oh. in Daring Demos with Daryl and Jethro. That is not normal. Uh, oh. oh. Uh, <clears throat> Welcome back uh, to uh, the, the Daring Demos with Daryl and uh, Jeff Jethro. Yeah, yep. Jethro. Just, just put that away down there. Okay. Um, if you remember from our last episode, we were looking at the uh, Health Check for Azure tool and the assessment area. So we were looking at how we could easily gather information and, uh, and be able to make some decisions about moving to Azure. And now this planner module is where we are going to start to explore deeper how these servers all interact and, um, and have dependencies between each other. So we have here a, a visual mm -hmm. representation of the, the servers that we have measured. And we have, we're have we trying to illustrate a, uh, a migration of a SQL workload. Um, so looking to try and group those servers and start to form a plan about what to move and when. So that is actually going to show us which servers are using databases? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, we, as you can see, on the right-hand side, we've got all the applications that are in use across all these servers. So the agents we had installed before are gathering more than just specifications. They're also seeing what is running on that server. And one of those workloads, of course, is SQL. So what we're going to do is use this search box here to just look at a, one server that we did look at earlier, the Acme server. And as we're searching that out, we can uh, have a quick look at just that server and what's running on that. And there is a list of a few applications. So if we select all those applications, we get a very quick picture of what that server is communicating with within the environment. Now, uh, that's one way to look at the environment. But of course, we're interested in trying to form a, a project to migrate SQL servers and their application servers into Azure. So what we're going to do is just look at the whole SQL migration group and all the servers that we've put into that group. And we're going to search for just the SQL workload. So as we highlight that and the, the dependencies between those servers, you see all those yellow lines are there to try and represent servers that are communicating with that central database server. And there might be another one over here too. But the key thing is we're able to easily see what we might need to move together. Now, uh, there are some servers that, of course, uh, we know that they have databases on that server. And then there are some that we, we perhaps didn't really uh, didn't sure. really remember. You know, we're a partner. We might be familiar with the environment, but maybe our customer has um, put a database on there that we mm -hmm. haven't known about. So it's a good way to to identify that mm, that server I haven't thought of yet. Maybe I need to make a plan to move that all together. Well, when we move like SQL into Azure, right? We have to open some firewall por ports. We need to know some IP addresses. How how do we get that? Right. So there's two ways to look at that. If I'm interested in the uh, interaction between these two servers, mm -hmm. now that yellow line is not just a yellow line. I, if I select that, I get the information about how the server interacts between those two. So I've got the IP addresses that it uses, some of the other workloads, not just SQL, but um, some of the other applications running there too, and the other ports. But that's just one um, interaction between the two servers, one dependency. Let's have a look at the whole group. So as we uh, expand that out and we can have a look at the whole group, We'll see this whole list of firewall rules, which mm -hmm. we can open up or download and have a, have a look from a, an Excel spreadsheet point of view. Um, our inbound rules and our outbound rules, our ports that we need to open, this is an important part of trying to create that virtual environment. We need to have an area in Azure where these servers can still communicate. Over and above that, we do have uh, a way of looking at the application workloads that are running on these servers. So if I'm interested in what has been used within this, this group of servers, mm -hmm. what's chewing up the most CPU, um, how has it been used, then I can quickly identify that. So pretty much what I can do is just see who is connecting with who, what is the low-hanging fruit of all the VMs that is related to your SQL server, and just migrate that very easily into Azure. Is that what you're actually saying? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the thing about 
this is that it's all been gathered by that agent that we ran for 14 days. Now it's information that you wouldn't get if you were just sitting and recording things in front of your server. So what is there if there's a server who is communicating to one of your SQL servers that where we didn't deploy an agent on, is, is that lost information? It's not going to pick it up or what happens there? Right, so yes, if we haven't deployed an agent on there, we do get a minimum of information. We know that the SQL server is communicating with something outside of our assessment. And so it is a, a good indication that we have to have a closer look at that server. Got it. Ideally, put the agent wherever you can so that you can get that full um, rundown of, of how these servers are communicating. Now really just to sum it up, our application or mig migration settings just at the bottom mm -hmm. there are literally a summary table. Uh, they're trying to identify the servers that have uh, multiple applications that it's communicating with. So you can start to form phases. You can say that here's a server where it's not really talking to many other services. Maybe I can move that first in phase one. Easy pickings. Whereas these other ones, as we come down, they've got more communicating applications. And we'll make more of an effort to try and form a plan around migrating into sure. Azure. Cool. Right, so that really sums up the planning tool. And you know, there's a lot of useful, useful information there that you wouldn't get if you sat down and tried to gather it yourself. So um, if you see the full picture now, we've got the assess, we've got the plan, and you're able to start to think about how I'm going to move into Azure. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we look forward to answering some more of your questions uh, from our fan base. Um, stay tuned. Looks cool, huh?